Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for February the 13th. I'm Haral Abos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving, uh, moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or uh, product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to, to read the rest and then we will jump into the markets. Okay, um, today I will talk about uh, the broader market sentiment which changed over the Asian uh, over the Asian morning today. I will talk about the Canadian dollar which was the main gainer among the G10s. I will talk about the Euro which was the main loser among the G10s. Also about the US CPIs which are on today's calendar. And as for the rest of uh, today's events, we have the U.S. initial jobless claims and one speaker during the Asian morning, who is uh, New York Fed President John Williams. As always, let's start with the performance of uh, the U.S. currency against uh, the other G10 uh, currencies. Uh, here we see that the dollar traded higher against all but two of the other G10s on Wednesday and during the Asian morning Thursday. It gained the most against the euro the Swiss franc and SEC, while it under, underperformed only against the Canadian dollar. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against the yen. Once again, the performance in the FX world paints a blurry picture with regards to the broader market sentiment. That said, the strengthening of the US dollar and the strengthening of the yen suggests that investor Morale took a 180 degree turn uh, at some point uh, yesterday or today during the Asian morning. In other words, risk appetite may have taken a strong hit. Indeed, although major EU and uh, US indices continued cheering yesterday's reports over a slowdown in, uh, in coronavirus cases, uh, Asian bourses uh, turned south today with Japan's Nikkei and China's Shanghai Composite sliding 0.14 and 0.71 uh, respectively. What uh, fueled the rally was the catalyst behind the overnight slide as well and this was headlines surrounding the coronavirus. Today during the Asian morning uh, China's Hubei, the epicenter of uh, the outbreak, reported a huge jump in the number of new cases and deaths. Specifically it reported uh, 14,860 new cases and if we add the cases elsewhere the number goes to 15,159. It also reported 242 deaths with the worldwide number being 254. Overall, the number of cases globally has surged to 60,327, while the number of deaths has risen to 1,369. Remember the graphs we showed yesterday? Those with, with the percentage change in cases uh, and deaths in any given day compared to the previous one? Below, at the, below you can find uh, the same graphs updated showing how steep the search was uh, in both cases in both cases and deaths. So we are back in acceleration mode. You can see that we, we are in a slowdown mode. Now we are back in a steep acceleration mode in both the cases and the deaths. Remember that anything above zero on these graphs shows acceleration while anything below zero shows a slowdown. And after the overnight reports, we see that we had a steep acceleration. Now, uh, as I said, we are back in acceleration mode, something that vanished hopes that the virus is nearing its peak and sparked fresh fears over its effect 
impacts on uh, the global economic arena. Yesterday we said that uh, we will not get excited over a long-lasting rally despite some equity indices hitting new records. Instead, we noted that we will take things day by day as the risks surrounding any reaction to fresh headlines may be asymmetrical and tilted to the downside. At this point, however, uh, it is fair to point out that the surge in cases may be due to Hebei's health commission, uh, s starting including uh, people, uh, people diagnosed with a new method. In any case, that's far from encouraging and supports our view that uh, the effects may not be so temporary as many believe. We stick to our guns that further spreading may not only impact uh, growth in the first quarter, but the economic uh, wounds could well drag into the second quarter. Now back to the currencies, the Canadian dollar was uh, the main gainer, perhaps aided by the recovery in oil prices. Both uh, Brent and WTI gained uh, 4.37 and 3.06% respectively, perhaps on hopes that o OPEC and its allies, uh, known as the OPEC Plus Group, will, uh, will proceed uh, with uh, deeper production cuts in order to offset uh, declines in demand caused by the fast spreading virus. Last, uh, last week producers, producers uh, suggested uh, to uh, last week producers, uh, producers suggested to reduce output by another uh, six, 600,000 barrels per day while yesterday OPEC lowered its demand projections for this year by 200,000 barrels per day adding to hopes that the cuts may be delivered as soon as uh, at the upcoming gathering, which could take place as early as this month. Some short covering may have also helped uh, the recovery in oil prices, as uh, those who sold oil on expectations that uh, the price will fall due to the cor coronavirus spreading may have now decided to lock some profits. Now, uh, the euro was the main loser among the G10s. We talked about the Canadian dollar, which, uh, which was the main gainer. Now let's uh, talk about the euro, which uh, was the main loser, with the euro dollar falling below last year's low of 108.79. You can see the chart here. Uh, that low was hit on October 1st, and yesterday we saw euro dollar tumbling below that uh, support barrier. The common currency has been in a steep slide, perhaps due to weak uh, data coming out from the Eurozone. Last week, German industrial production slumped 3.5% month over month in December, dragging the Euro area's, uh, the Euro area's uh, monthly rate, which was released on Wednesday, down to minus 2.1% from plus 0.2%. This pushed the block's year-over-year -year rate down to minus 4.1% from minus 1.7% and may have raised concerns that the second estimate of Eurozone's uh, GDP for the fourth quarter, which is coming, tomorrow, is coming out tomorrow, may be revised lower from a modest 0.1% uh, quarter over quarter growth to stagnation. In any case, a weaker euro may eventually prove uh, helpful for the bloc's economy, especially given the ECB's uh, limited scope for further easing. Thus, although the ECB has clearly stated several times that it does not target the exchange rate, a lower euro may be a welcome development for policymakers, as it may alleviate some pressure for additional uh, stimulus in the, in the months to come. Now, as uh, for today, the main event on the economic calendar may be the US CPIs uh, for January. The headline rate is forecast to have risen further above the Fed's uh, target of uh, 2%. Specifically, it is expected to have ticked up to 2.4% from 2.3% in December. The core CPI rate is forecast to have ticked down to plus 0.2% from 2.3% the previous month. Having said all that, though, the year-over-year -year, uh, uh, rate of change in WTI crude oil has dropped into negative territory during the month. You can see the graph here that uh, the black line is uh, the year-over-year -year change in WTI, and you can see that in January that uh, change has fallen into negative territory. So if indeed the core CPI slows, we see the risk of the headline CPI 
to slow more. Don't forget that the difference between the headline and the core CPIs is based on uh, volatile items of uh, food and energy. On this graph you can s clearly see how, how the year-over-year change in WTI tracks uh, the CPI spread, the difference between the headline rate and the core rate. The gray, uh, the gray histogram here is, um, is the CPI spread and you can see that the WTI year over year change is tracking, is decently tracking that uh, change. Now in case uh, we prove correct and we see a slowdown in both uh, the headline and the core CPI inflation metrics. Uh, this may raise speculation that the year-over-year -year core PCE rate, which is the Fed's favorite inflation gouge, may slide further below the Fed's objective of 2%. That rate stood at 1.6% in December and has been below the 2% target since December 2018. You can see that on uh, this graph here. We have the headline CPI, the core CPI, and the core PCE rate which has been below the Fed's target of 2% since December 2018. So, uh, speculation of further slowdown in the core PCE rate may prompt investors to add two bets with regards to another cut by the Fed and thereby trigger a dollar correction. According to the Fed Fund Futures, I have the graph again here. Investor ha investors are still pricing in another 25 basis point uh, cut to be delivered in September. You can see the current rate, the rate after a 25 basis points cut, and you can see that this is still priced in for September. Now, as for the rest of today's events, apart from the US CPIs, we also get uh, the initial jobless claims for last week and expectations are for an increase to uh, 210k from 202k. And we also have one speaker on the agenda and it is during the Asian Morning Friday. This speaker is uh, New York Fed President John Williams. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a, a great day and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you again, to, again tomorrow. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at uh, 0 08 uh, at, uh, at 08 uh, o'clock a.m. at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT time. So goodbye uh, from me and have a great uh, day. Thank you very much.